All right, well, today is the day. I had to get myself a little acquainted with the Mr. before jumping into the big unveiling of today's focus. I'm by no means an expert after just a few short months, but I feel comfortable saying I've picked up the basics and I'm certainly more than ready to begin taking a look at the Mr. Cade. So on that note, I will say that this is a beta. While much effort has been given to get the project this far, there still may be tweaks and changes to come. I wanna be clear that what you see today might not necessarily reflect the final product because, well, it, it's a beta. So for that reason, don't think of this as a review either. We're, we're not making any final judgments on something that could still see some changes. A lot of work has gone into this project and I was fortunate enough to get to watch this talented group of individuals bring to life a fantastic creation that will provide a nice alternative to collecting the ever more expensive arcade PCBs. So yes, that's what this thing does. Simply put, it takes your mister and gives it a JAMA edge that is then suitable for plugging into an arcade machine. So all those amazing things that you can do with the mister now, you get to do on a genuine cabinet. This is actually really easy to set up and get going too. If you haven't guessed, you'll likely be taking your mister apart or buying another DE10 for use with the Mr. Cade. On your DE10, you're going to flip switch zero towards the center of the board. All other switches here should remain off. Mr. Cade then gets placed right on top of your DE10. Do make sure you have everything lined up and are careful with the pins when seating this though. Once you have the DE10 paired with the Mr. Cade, go ahead and plug in your USB bridge. On the Mr. Kate itself, you then also have a few settings. I'll be using video over the JAMA edge, so this switch here goes to the left, the right is for those wanting to output via VGA. There is a power jumper that is able to protect the board by using a built-in power circuit. I have my device set up to use that. The alternative is to just take power direct from the arcade power supply unprotected. I also went ahead and switched my audio to use the internal volume control. While we're looking at the board, I'll call out a few other things here. You do have inputs to use either a CPS-1 or CPS-2 kick harness. Next to that is your volume control and a little farther down is a USB port, which you can see I have my wireless keyboard dongle connected to. More towards the center, we also have the standard reset user and on-screen display buttons. There's also a series of 10 switches that are parallel to the three we just mentioned. I'm not going to go through all of these, but if you're curious, you can find their functions listed out in a table that I'll link in the description. On the other long side of the board, we have a host of output options, starting with the USB that is power only, two options for audio output, and a VGA connector. And the very end is your snack connection option. All right, let's actually finish setting this up. You wanna download the files for the Mr. Cade from the link I just referenced in the description. In those files, you should have two any files, one for 15 kilohertz and one for 31. Now, hopefully you know which frequency your arcade monitor is running at. The two machines I plan to use this in are both 15, so I'm just going to rename that file to mister.ini and then take all of these other files and copy them over to my Mr. SD card, overwriting anything that is already there. And that's really it, you should be good to go. I will mention though, out of good practice, please make sure your power supply is outputting between 5.1 and 5.3 volts for Mr. Cade. It's noted that if you're using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth dongles, you need to push things closer to the 5.3 so you get enough power for everything. So since this is a JAMA pinout, you can use the Mr. Cade in any JAMA wired cabinet. I'll start with the Astro City here, which is an all around great candy cab. It's very versatile and looks great with its large 29 inch monitor. And this was a fun moment, plugging this in and hoping to see this work. And thankfully we are greeted with that familiar menu that anyone who runs a Mr. knows. And I was really torn at this moment too. Like what, what should be the first game to load and try? I've oddly been playing a lot of Tapper lately, so I decided to stick with that classic. As you can see, no issues, this boots right up, and you're just going to treat this the same way you would normally. 
I hit F12, go into the menu to define the controls. Now with Tapper, you can kind of cheat a little bit here. It only uses one button. So the other two I have here for first player can be mapped as anything else. So I'm gonna make the farthest from my stick, my coin button, just for ease of use. And yeah, this is Tapper running on my Sega Astro City flawlessly. This is a beautiful thing to see. Again, this is a classic, classic game, and I'm honestly never going to spend the money on a tapper machine or board. So this gives me the next best option, in my opinion, for playing the game on an arcade machine. So far, so good. This is exactly the void I had hoped Mr. Cade could fill. All right, and I really can't deny one of my first arcade memories. Now, some of you have heard me talk about this many times over. Kung Fu Master by Irem. This is a board I actually own that went bad on me a few years ago and I've never been able to get it repaired or replaced. And I actually still have the original marquee. But now I don't know that I'll be chasing down another original PCB because here is the Irem Classic running once again on my Astro City. And this is just a beautiful thing to see and brings back a lot of great memories. Now keep in mind, this is the same scenario as Tapper. You need to go in and map your controls before you start playing. And once you do that, however, you're good to go and things run and look identical to the real deal. No one would really be the wiser without looking inside of your cabinet. Yeah, and then quite honestly, at this point, it was really easy to get distracted flipping through various arcade titles and playing them. Just like instantly getting dozens of new PCBs for your machine. And from a convenience standpoint, you don't even need to power everything down. You can just swap cores by pulling up the menu or reboot the mister if you feel you need to do that. Hell, play some Nintendo games on your cab if you want or tell your friends you picked up a versus board. Speaking of all this switching, I would recommend getting yourself a handheld keyboard rather than having some boxy thing laying around. These are surprisingly cheap. It can be had for like 12 bucks on Amazon. Okay, so now it was time to up my game. I switched things over to the big blue cabinet to test some Capcom games out. I have three interests here with this. One, I want to connect the Mr. Cade's RCA audio out to the Capcom sound amp to test that. Two, I want to plug in the CPS2 kick harness to the Mr. Cade and test some six button games out, namely Street Fighter II Champion Edition. And three, this is just really cool. I want to see Mr. Cade running seamlessly on a Capcom big blue cabinet. First things first, I have to disconnect the Darksoft CPS2 multi and get Mr. Cade hooked up. Now, this is pretty easy though. It's just the audio cables and kick harness in addition to the JAMA harness. No surprise here, everything boots up really nicely, just like on the Astro City. I'll go ahead and start with Champion Edition. It's my favorite version of Street Fighter II. Okay, so once this loads up, we have to map the controls again. You can see that the kick buttons register and I'm able to map all six buttons appropriately. This is set to free play, so I don't have to worry about my coin button, but if you wanted to map that, you could easily do so by pushing your service button on the machine. As you can see in game, all six buttons behave exactly the way you would expect them to, so we have no issues with the Mr. Cade using the CPS2 kick harness. I'm going to switch over to Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. This is another great beat em up from Capcom. Much like Tapper and Kung Fu Master, I probably won't ever seek out buying an original PCB for this now that I can play it via Mr. Cade. Now, even though this game doesn't require a kick harness, I still have the CPS2 kick harness connected to the Mr. Cade. This is really nice because we then have the option to map controls to any of those six buttons. So I now have the convenience of putting my coin and pause button on my bottom row. So once you have the kick harness connected to the Mr. K, there really isn't a great reason that I can think of to disconnect it. it. Really just gives you added flexibility. I did fire up some vertical games too, although I was far too lazy to rotate my monitor to play them. That's just more of a chore than I'm willing to go through with on Big Blue, but you guys kind of get the idea here. This is proof of concept. Oh, and I almost forgot, the audio through the Capcom amp works really well. Games sound great.
You will definitely want to turn down the core volume though if you're using an amp. I, I kind of forgot during my first attempt and coining up just about blew me out the door. So that is the Mr. Cade. And from the time that I first heard that this was actually going to be a thing, I've been excited for it and it really has not disappointed. Each year, there's usually a gaming related item that really stands out and impresses me more than I ever thought it could. And while the Mr. K doesn't really offer any surprises, I mean, it does exactly what it's advertised to. It's just the thrill of instantly expanding your arcade library FPGA style that makes this so awesome. This is the complete opposite experience of what I had with the Pi to Jamma. Mr. K just flat out works and it works incredibly well. A final note that I'm gonna close out on, what do you guys think this does for arcade multi-development and solutions? That's a really interesting question that I don't know if I can even really begin to answer myself just yet. I look at my Darksoft CPS2 kit and I'm definitely not selling that and truth be told, it will continue to live in my big blue. But is there a need for that once CPS2 really takes off on the mister? If you had no solution for CPS2 today, which direction would you go? Darksoft CPS1 Multi is almost ready for pre-order phase and suddenly I'm left with a real decision as to whether or not I need or want that. The titles I'm most interested in from a CPS1 library are already represented on Mr. and now I can play them on my arcade. And lastly, I want to thank Porkchop Express of Mr. Addons for allowing me to test this unit and share it with you here today. Definitely watch his Twitter and store for announcements and links to buy the Mr. Cade when this is a fully available at retail. Should also thank everyone else listed here who has worked on this project tirelessly and who did the actual work on it, unlike me who is just here telling you about it today. These guys are really making amazing things happen behind the scenes, so be sure to give them some support. But that's it for today, everyone. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.